Hi everybody, I'm dropping in today to remind you that you're not guilty. That's right, you heard it right. You're not guilty because you did not create yourself. God created you. So you're innocent, you're whole, you're perfect, and you are complete. You are not guilty. Take a moment and close your eyes. Take a breath and accept truth. I am not guilty. I did not create myself. I'm going to be reading from chapter 13 from The Course in Miracles and if you'd like to join with me go grab your book, come on back and we're going to get started on The Guiltless World, chapter 13. If you did not feel guilty, you could not attack. For condemnation is the root of attack. When I think that I have left God, there's automatic guilt in my mind. When I think that God's going to punish me for having left Him, there's guilt in my mind. And to get rid of that guilt, so I can feel better, I throw it on to everyone. The original guilt is I think I've left God, but that could never happen because what created you out of itself, as itself, the first cause and effect relationship, can never be separate. But when I think that, I start to make up an imposter self, the ego. And to get rid of all of the fear and all of this unconscious guilt, I need lots of scapegoats. I've condemned myself. I feel guilty. I don't want to be punished by God. So I'll throw my guilt on to you and blame you and think that I'm safe now. But then I have to come back to this truth, there's no one but me. There's no one but me. Our next line says, it is the judgment of one mind by another as unworthy of love and deserving of punishment. That's the problem. When I have guilt, I think I'm, I don't deserve love. I need, I deserve to be punished. And God's going to punish me, so I better do something quick. So I'll get rid of the guilt by punishing someone else. But there is no one else. I, it's a cycle of insanity. So herein lies the split. For the mind that judges perceives itself as separate from the mind being judged. I'm judging you. I think I'm separate from you, but I'm not. And in this insanity, I'm believing that by punishing another, you, I'm going to escape punishment. I'm afraid of being punished by God. You know, Jehovah in the Old Testament, that's going to somehow throw a lightning bolt down at you. That's what I'm afraid of. All this is but the delusional attempt of the mind to deny itself and escape the penalty of denial, but it's not an attempt to relinquish denial, but to hold on to it. For it is guilt, guilt in the mind. That's what has obscured the Father to you. And it is guilt that has driven you crazy, insane. When you're one with God, then you're extending everything that God is to everyone and everything. You're the embodiment of love. But when you're not believing that and you separate, separate, and you're over here, full of guilt, that will drive you insane. That's why we drink, take drugs, watch porn, go shopping, shopaholic, whatever it is, the addict, it's, that's the insanity of a mind that thinks it's bad and that God's going to punish it. 
The acceptance of guilt into the mind of God's Son, that was the beginning of the separation. As the acceptance of the atonement is the end. And the atonement is before time was. You know, when I'm one with God, I have everything I need. Because I'm in perfect isness. That's a good thing. Isness. That's my business. To be in perfect oneness with God. The first cause and effect relationship is perfect isness. That's my business. And the world that you see is delusional. This world of insanity is the delusional system of those made mad by guilt. And if you look out, just look at the insanity in our world. That is an outpicturing of the mind projecting its guilt onto one another. If you look carefully at this world, you'll realize that this is so. For this world is a symbol of punishment, and all the laws that seem to govern it are the laws of death. Dead man walking, when you're over here, fear, guilt, ego, nothing. Everything, God, love, spirit. It's a choice. Why do you choose to beat yourself up? Why do you choose to stay in situations that are very abusive? Why do you choose to stay in, in dead-end jobs and everything else that offer you nothing? It's over and you, you continue to stay. Why do we do that to ourselves? You know, when we get back into alignment with love, we're internally guided. We know exactly what to do. And that love is everything. And there's no pain in that. This world is a world of death. Children, we're all children. No matter what size we are, we're children of the beloved. Children are born into this world of suffering through pain and in pain. And our growth is attended by suffering. Buddha said life has suffering in it. When you don't know who you are, you're going to suffer. So the, the growth that we go through is attended by suffering, and we learn of sorrow and desperation and despair and death. That's what we learn here. Our minds seem to be trapped in our brain, this computerized hunk of meat. It's, it, we're trapped in this. And its powers to decline if our bodies are hurt. We seem to love, yet we desert, and we are deserted. We appear to lose what we love. Perhaps the most insane belief of all is that our bodies wither up, and we gasp in the end for air, and then finally we're laid in the ground. We become food for the worms. And we're no more done. None of us has thought that God is cruel. I mean, if this were true, if that was the real world, then God would be cruel. For no father could subject his children to this as the price of salvation and be loving. No loving father would ever beat a child into or make the child starve or be impoverished on, you know, poor. And no father would ever hurt their son. Love does not hurt. Love doesn't kill to save. Love doesn't beat. Love doesn't condemn. Love is not a clanging bell. We read this in Proverbs in the Bible. Love is all-encompassing. If it did, attack would be salvation. If love does not kill to serve, and if it did, attack would be salvation. And this is the ego's interpretation, not God's. Only the world of guilt could demand this, for only the guilty could conceive of it. Adam's, quote, sin could have touched no one had he not believed it was the father who drove him out of paradise. You know, Adam felt guilty because he actually thought that he had usurped or overthrown God as the creator by making 
the ego to replace God. That's the guilt. That is the guilt. He made the ego, he believed, you know, this ego, this separate self to replace God. And he believed in this insanity that he had managed somehow to be self-created. He, he really thought, I created myself, right? And that's what we think when we're not one with our creator, that all these self-concepts that you come up with, that you have somehow created yourself. And that's the guilt. You feel guilty, but you're not guilty. This is an, a mad hallucination. You're under a spell, dreaming the dream of insanity. So then it goes on to say, had he not believed it was the Father who drove him out of paradise, for in that belief, the knowledge of the Father was lost, since only those who do not understand him could believe it. This world is a picture of the crucifixion of God's Son. I mean, really. It's, it's just look at what's going on today. You know, to usher in this new age, the golden age of love, of light, the golden age of Aquarius, we really need miracle workers who remember who they are, who remember the atonement, to, to give that guilt, you know, give it to the spirit, thought by thought, let those attack thoughts go. This world is a picture of the, of the crucifixion of God's Son, and until you realize that God's Son cannot be crucified, this is the world you will see. Don't make anyone wrong for you to be right. Don't make the error real. Don't see people as guilty. That's just, you're giving yourself away. If you see condemnation, if you see a rage and attack and pain and suffering and you make it all real, then you're seeing a crucified son. You're seeing the world of crucifixion. You're not going to realize this until you accept the eternal fact that you're not guilty. We accept that God's son is not guilty. No matter what he's done, I mean, look at the people in your life, the ones that you look at that deserve punishment. People in jail, they deserve to be punished. They're losers, they're idiots. They get out of my space, get out of my face. You're all a bunch of losers. No, see, no, no don't see one single human being as guilty. No one is guilty. If you see one person as guilty, it's you that has projected your guilt onto them. See no one as guilty and do not make the error real. God's son is not guilty. He deserves only love because he has given only love. Only love is real. We keep going back to that. He cannot be condemned because he is never condemned. In truth, you are the one son of the Father. You are the Christ self. You cannot condemn. That's a mad hallucination. You're under a spell. You are, it, it's like the ego is an, is an idea in your mind that you think you can be separate from God. That's it. And the ego's job is to get you to believe that you are guilty. That's that's insanity. It's just trying to get you to be guilty for so-called crimes. You never commit it. Because the Father and the Son, perfect isness, oneness, can never be anything else but. The atonement is the final lesson that you need to learn. For it teaches you that never having sinned, you have no need of salvation. That's such a great message to contemplate and to sit in. You know, just take a few minutes, maybe at the end of your day, and 
maybe you're laying in bed tonight, just lay there and think about, wow, I am not guilty. There's no sin in me. I've never sinned. I've never committed any crime because I am the eternal son of my father. And as long as I hold this guilt in my mind, I am going to suffer. But, you know, at the same time, in this world of time and space, if you've made mistakes, mistakes are correctable. If you've hurt someone, make amends. Make it right in this world. You know, be responsible for what you've done or, or for what you didn't do. Make choices that make you feel good about your life. This is what we can do practically in the world, but just know you are eternally loved. You are eternally held in the heart of God. There is no guilt in you, and you are not a sinner. You are innocent. Just lay tonight in your bed and think those thoughts. And see if you can go so in, fall so deeply inward, that you reach that point, that core in you, that is free of suffering, free of attack thoughts, free of guilt, free of pain of any kind. Reach that point of perfect health and perfect abundance perfect joy. Go there, because that's what's real. That's what's true. You are not guilty. So that's what I wanted to share with you today and to wish you a great weekend and to remind you that uh, I will be up in KL on the 22nd, Saturday evening, for an amazing summer solstice breathwork session, followed by a Course in Miracles on Sunday. The topic is the two uses of time. It's a great topic. Share it with your family and friends. I hope to see you all there. But in the meantime, I want to tell you, I love you. I love you. And you're not guilty. None of us are guilty. I love you. You know that I do. And I'll be back in a few days with some more good news. Until then, have a great weekend. Lots of love. Bye for now.